Alright people, today we're going in one of those movies that was very popular back in the gosh darn 90s, but today, now I remember it so well, we're talking clear and present danger with Harrison Ford. That's right, let's get right into it. Hello, Put a little weekend in your week, rent a video. So Harrison Ford, when you really think about it, has been in so much stuff. I mean, the guy's filmography is just like impressive to say the least. He's in Star Wars, he's in Indiana Jones, he's in The Witness, he's in The Fugitive, he's in this, he's in Patriot Games, he's in What Lies Beneath, he's in Morning Glory, he's in Working Girl. I mean, the guy has just a packed filmography. And I think it's really wild is how many how many kind of characters he can adapt into. It can be Han Solo, it can be Indiana Jones, the rugged adventurer out for treasure, or it can be Han Solo, the snarky spacefarer with the with the Wookiee sidekick, or then you got him in the witness, where he plays, you know, alongside the Amish for a change, and then he's the fugitive where he seamlessly transitions into Quinn Martin's masterpiece of high-speed chases and double indemnity. Then he's in funny romantic comedies like Morning Glory where he portrays a drunken old sot, and then he's in What Lies Beneath where he plays a sociopathic murderer. I mean, the guys, he can just play so many different types of characters and you totally buy it. And also if you don't like what what lies beneath, you just go 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 eat an ice cream cone. You don't know what, what a good horror movie is. What lies beneath is awesome. And if you haven't seen What Lies Beneath, check it out. If you think all Harrison Ford can play as a fuzzy, lovable protagonist, watch What Lies Beneath. It's gonna catch you off guard. It's going gonna, it's gonna to clue you into just the kind of range Harrison Ford's got. I had an affair with her. She came out here to the house, threatened to kill herself. Anywho, Clear and Present Danger is a pretty gosh darn good movie. The, the case really doesn't do it justice. It looks, from the outside, like a boring legal drama. But it's actually a really fun and cool political thriller and there's tons of action scenes and tons of tons of stuff and it's really really good and I, I, honestly I think this movie doesn't get talked about as much as it should in terms of Harrison Ford's 90's films because I mean it's just, it's just so great and also Willem Dafoe's in this the flipping green goblin who doesn't like Willem Dafoe Willem Dafoe brings the heat in this I don't know how I've never heard of this movie before. If I wasn't reviewing 47 random VHS tapes, I probably would never have found out about this movie, and that'd be a shame, because it's a really good movie. This is a sequel to The Hunt for Red October and Patriot Games. The Hunt for Red October being the one where Jack Ryan is played by Alec Baldwin, which I can't even begin to imagine. And in Patriot Games, he's Harrison Ford, which doesn't really matter. Jack Ryan is a very generic character, and pretty much anyone could play him. Heck, I could play him and do a convincing job, because in Tom Clancy's novels, he's just like James Bond, you know, he's just a nameless figure, kind of. But I think Harrison Ford really brings some, some steam to the guy. And I think, you know, I, I wouldn't sit through an entire Tom Clancy novel even though he is hailed as the master of political thrillers, and I see his books on shelves all the time, and, you know, oh man, it's Jack Ryan, the Ryaniverse. I don't really care about that, but it's, it's flipping Harrison Ford. He, he does a darn good job as Jack Ryan. I can't even begin to imagine what Alec Baldwin would be like in the role, but guess what? Hunt for Red October is also in the collection, so I'm going to be watching that uh, in a while here, and it's set chronologically before this one, but this is the kind, the rare kind of sequel that you don't need to see any of the, you don't need to see either of the first two to understand this one. You don't need to see Patriot Games, don't need to see Red October. This is the kind of sequel that just kind of stands on its own as a standalone movie. 
And I, you know, I think that's interesting. A trilogy where all the entries are technically connected, but in two of them it's Harrison Ford, and in one of them it's Alec Baldwin, and they all stand alone as their own adventure. I just think that's really interesting. On the back here it says, also available from Paramount Home Video, Patriot Games, and The Hunt for Red October. I don't have Patriot Games, but I'm sure Harrison Ford is also pretty good in that. I just think Harrison Ford's really good in this. I wouldn't recommend watching this alongside Patriot Games or Red October. I would suggest watching this actually alongside The Fugitive or The Witness, because in all three films, this The Fugitive and The Witness, Harrison plays uh, you know, kind of someone on the run from some sort of imminent danger that's about to catch up with him, and he's running out of time. So I think thematically, this has a lot more in common with The Fugitive or The Witness. But it's very much a Tom Clancy type, type scenario, and you can tell it's a movie based off a novel, because there are just so many characters to keep track of. There's Harrison Ford, there's his wife, there's the president, there's all these random politicians hanging around. There's the guy with the glasses. There's the drug lord. There's his assistant. There's the other lady. There's her boss. So many different characters to keep track of. And it's not that hard to do, but you can tell this is a movie based off a novel. And, you know, it's just something you can kind of tell if a movie is based off a novel. Like The Firm, for instance. That's the kind of movie you can just tell right off the bat. Yeah, this is based off a novel. I. I first watched the movie of The Firm, and then I read, you know, when I was very young, so I, I didn't remember any of it, and then I just read the book, and the book was incredible, because, I mean, John Grisham is just a much better writer than Tom Clancy, and then I watched the movie, and I was like, okay, this is weak sauce compared to the book, because it has so many cool details and stuff, but I, I don't think I'm missing too much by popping this in, because Tom Clancy of course, isn't John Grisham, and, it, 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 you know, I, I don't mean to diss the guy, but I think his movies, I think his books and properties are a little overrated. I don't think Jack Ryan is that interesting a character. I think he's only interesting because he's played by Harrison Ford, and Harrison Ford brings the heat. No troops. I will say that this movie, for the time, has an incredibly nuanced perspective on Latin American relations. I think it's very interesting how, it, you know, first you think the villain is this Colombian drug lord, uh, but then, you know, Willem Dafoe does all these horrible things to the drug lord, you know, he blows up his facilities, and he blows up this jolly birthday party the drug lord is throwing, so then you think, oh, the villain is Willem Dafoe, obviously, because he's this like sleazy paramilitary creep who's being illegally hired by the government to go go down and you know mess things up without you know where America doesn't belong it's not their jurisdiction to do this are you able to handle this operation or not what I'm looking for here is a simple yes or no what you're looking for is a political mess and then in the end Willem Dafoe just oh yeah spoilers by the way Willem Dafoe just kind of teams up with Harrison Ford, and it's revealed that the actual villain of the whole movie is the drug lord's lawyer slash intelligence operative, who's this little weasel without any integrity, who's willing to make deals with the Americans just so he can run the whole drug ring, and the drug lord dies. You know, he is a drug lord, but down in Colombia, you know, maybe it's not seen as so bad. And I think this is a very, uh, it, it's a very politically relevant movie for the time when this came out it was the full-on war on drugs and you've also had cases of America interfering in places where it doesn't belong like when they upended Salvador Allende and uh, you know put Pinochet in there that's not right and I think it's it's great that a movie recognizes that that America stuffs its nose in countries where it doesn't belong because those countries have their own goddamn governments and uh, America needs to quit butting in. I think that's a, a very wholesome message for this movie to spread. On, on the tape here, now this is really interesting. It, 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 there's a sticker from Blockbuster Video, and it says, To play is human, to rewind is divine. I've never heard that one. I suppose it's not as catchy as Be Kind, Rewind. 
to play as human to rewind as divine, but who knows, maybe Blockbuster Video had a hundred funny little novelty stickers that they would slap on tapes like this. If any of you uh, were around for Blockbuster, let me know some of the other ones you found on your old VHS tapes. Any funny stickers uh, with different modifications of Be Kind Rewind? I don't know. Just something interesting. Clear and Present Danger is a great movie. There's a lot of stunts, a lot of cool choreography, and the sets are, mm, the sets are really nice. The sets are very convincing especially the scene with the shootout in the middle of the street. So much fire, so much bullets, and you're just like, man, I, I wonder if Harrison is going to get out of this one unscathed. At one point, uh, the, the skeezy uh, lawyer slash intelligence operative for the drug lord is referred to as the Latin Jack Ryan because apparently he looks kind of like Harrison Ford, and I don't see the resemblance at all. I mean, he doesn't look like Harrison Ford. He looks like a different guy, but uh, I don't know what, what that's all about. This is a really great movie. I haven't read the book. I'm not gonna. I find Tom Clancy's stuff kind of boring, but uh, I read the Wikipedia article for Clear and Present Danger, and uh, it says that the book is considered a dystopian novel because it deals with the abuse of power and I would say that, that it's not a dystopian story, I'd say that's a real stretch. I mean, all presidents have abused their power to, you know, in some regard. I think this movie doesn't present a much more exaggerated version of that than, you know, the Iraq War or anything. Uh, if this is a dystopian movie, then the entire Bush administration was a dystopia. Dang, I guess it kind of was. But I mean, you can't just go around calling things dystopias. Because I mean, at, at the end of this, Harrison Ford outs the president in front of Congress, and the president can't do anything, and he gets impeached, presumably, or whatever. So, I don't know how that's a dystopia. I mean, it seems like a perfectly functioning government to me. You know, just because some secrets are hidden doesn't mean the truth won't will out and that society won't hold the president and his cronies accountable. Uh, the president in this is a fictional president, which, as I go through these VHS tapes, I'm realizing is becoming a more and more common uh, trope in these. I mean, gosh darn, it seems like nobody just wanted to put Clinton in a movie. Like, you know, not, he, he didn't even have to be Clinton necessarily. It could just have been a Clinton lookalike. And Archer reprises her role from Patriot Games as Jack Ryan's wife. And of course, you got James Earl Jones as the old CIA uh, fellow. And I'd say this movie does paint the CIA in a little too honorable light. I mean, I think as far as like the branches of investigation go, I think the CIA resorts to a lot more sleazy tactics than the FBI. But, you know, uh, I guess the idea is that Harrison Ford is like the only one who's even remotely interested in justice and He's surrounded by a bunch of criminals who are doing all this corrupt shit and, you know, hiring Willem Dafoe and his wacky paramilitary bullshit boys to stage an entire flippin' coup. So, I mean, this is a, this is a movie with a lot to say politically. I'm not even sure I caught all of the political nuance this movie has to offer, so pop it in check it out, see if, if you can catch something I didn't, you know, all the, all the messages in this, it's, it's a very heavy type movie, and if you thought Tom Clancy novels were just, you know, basic, like, generic uh, stuff, then this movie might convince you otherwise. I just find Tom Clancy stuff kind of dry. I wouldn't watch this in, I wouldn't read this in book form, but, uh, you know, because Jack Ryan is just like a generic, generic character. But Harrison Ford really uh, kind of makes him come into his own. You could say I have your word on that. You could indeed, because you do. And Willem Dafoe is also really good. I mean, who doesn't like Willem Dafoe? You don't like Willem Dafoe? 
that, that's not that's not kosher. I mean, Willem Dafoe is just uh, Willem Dafoe. Uh, who doesn't like him? You know, yeah, every movie he's in, he really kills it. Especially as the Green Goblin and the Good Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire. Man, remember when Marvel was a company that actually put good products out? I, I miss those days. I was like one year old when the original Spider-Man came out, but I miss those days all the same. Uh, yeah, that's Clear and Present Danger, a thrilling, action-packed romp with Harrison Ford. So if you like Harrison Ford, you will like this. The tagline is, Truth Needs a Soldier. And, uh, you know, it's just a very, very gosh darn cool movie. I, I hope I find Patriot Games on VHS sometimes so I can complete my Jack Ryan trilogy. Uh, but yeah, I'll be reviewing The Hunt for Red October sometime, and even though it happens before this, I'll get to compare the two Ryans and see which one I like better, Harrison Ford or Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin's one of those actors that's always underwhelmed me and made me think, how do people hold this guy in such high regard? I mean, even in the 90s, he was a laughing stock. He starred alongside flipping Thomas, the tank engine, as Mr. Conductor. Sausage? Bicycle? And then he's the boss baby. How do people still think Alec Baldwin is like some kind of revolutionary groundbreaker or something? I mean, the guy can do a convincing impression of Trump. That's about all he's, he's good for, you know? The boss baby, my gosh. But who knows, maybe in the hunt for Red October, young Alec Baldwin will really surprise me. I think I'm looking forward to Sean Connery more. But anywho, that's Clear and Present Danger. What do I rate Clear and Present Danger? Well, I'm gonna give it four stars. Not five stars, because it's just not the kind of movie I would typically watch. I would watch What Lies Beneath, uh, Any Day Over This, or The Witness, just because The Witness is uh, in my opinion, a, a better thriller. But this is a movie with a lot of merit, and if you like these kind of political action movies, then you will like Clear and Present Danger. Just not my kind of movie. If someone else gives us five stars, I, uh, I can definitely get it, but uh, this just isn't the kind of movie I would pop into the VHS if I had a choice, but unfortunately I'm being held here by the VHS gods to review 47 movies consecutively with no breaks, no stops, no interruptions, just a straight train ride down to hell. That said, this has been Clear and Present Danger, a review on VHS Crazy, and if you'd like to keep these reviews pumping out, show some support, then write to Nicholas Eaton, 1424 Columbine Street, number 1, Denver, Colorado, 80206. We got some fresh content out, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Sayonara, suckers. To rewind is divine. And I wonder why that one didn't catch on.